folks and welcome to another daily Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. Um, Friday I have mentioned I'm going to provide such kind of a series of, you know, to start historically when everything has started to become to, to, to go in the wrong direction. I'm talking about the banking sector, financial sector, including crypto, because it's the same. Of course, not that old, but it's the same. It's, it's, it's the same money. You can say and tell whatever you want, but it's the same money. When you have 20 million Bitcoins and you know that almost 25% of these 20 million Bitcoins are in hands of few who started to buy them in 2018, 2019, and even they distributed a lot, but they still, you, you know, it's the same money. And you can tell whatever you want. You can uh, place more stupid comments um, below of my videos or on, on Twitter. It, it's fine for me. You are just uh, wasting your time because I'm just going to ban you, uh, just to block you or whatever, because, you know, it's, it's also, I don't want to waste my time. However, I would like to start with the current example because it demonstrates once again that this picture that I described so many times of this ship that pushed up before it sinks and disappear from the surface of the water is what's happening. And people are, once again, like they did in 2021, laughing at me. Ah, oh, the inspo perma bear. Uh, he is always bearish. And you are useless. Your analysis are absolutely use, uh, useless, they say. And yeah, I, I would laugh. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hope, I really hope I'm absolutely wrong and all my analysis are useless and my knowledge is absolutely useless because you are brilliant. You are brilliant. Yes, we see green candles and we buy. You mortgage your house, sell everything, every single fund you have out there and buy because it's the time to buy the dip. It's always the time to buy the dip when the price goes down. And it doesn't look that bad. I mean, on Bitcoin from almost 15, whatever, we did 100%. That's bullish, guys. Go for it and buy as much as you can. Don't cry later. And don't say nobody want you. Not, not alone about crypto, in general about all markets, equities. In general, we can talk about equities. And, you know, the problem is not the market itself. Um, it's the environment. It's liquidity. Follow the flows is the slogan of Phoenicia. Follow the flows, the flows, the money flows. Why is that important? Because you can say you wish 100 bitcoins, but if you don't have the liquidity, it will always be just a wish. You need the money. And when we are talking about hundreds of millions or even 50, 60 millions, usually a bank is involved directly or indirectly, but it's always involved or in insurance, but such kind of institution, it's always behind. So the money is always coming from the same source. It is what it is, if you like it or not, I don't care and the Fed don't care and many others don't care. Even the institutionals don't care. I will show you that they don't care. <laughs> they don't care about your deposits or whatever. And you know that I'm, you know, um, I'm, I would say I'm a very honest person. I, I could, I could just say crypto is bad and shit and the banking sector is doing well because th at least these guys are paying my monthly bills. It's not crypto, these guys. But we are not here to shill. We are not here to be dishonest. Dishonest means in crypto or 
in the banking sector, financial con conditions in general, we are here to make a, a good discussion. I would like to share my experience and my knowledge with you. You can use it or you can leave it and say, I don't care. The money is pushing up. I will jump in. I will buy my next Lamborghini. Ah, it's up to you. You can do it. You know, when people are saying, ah, you are not even trading. I don't trust someone that's not trading. You are stupid with such a comment. I was trading all the time. I just stopped to trade. And I have mentioned so many times why I did. So if you think, ah, I need to trade always, good luck. We will talk about that in a few years. How successful you were. But that's another thing. Um, so... Let us let us talk a little bit about the banking sector. Because the Fed is doing what they, it seems, they know, or it's their best performance. It's the best they can do. Rebalancing. Rebalancing and supporting the banking sector. And they don't care if the money that they are taking is to support their customers or just to pump just a little bit more to the markets. A market that is artificially, and not only crypto, pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, trapping more retails. I've warned so many times and people don't care. And I don't care. I will not care in the future as well. So if we take a look, um, the US has a big, big problem at the moment. Uh, we don't have the same problem in Germany, at least. I think in Europe it, it even looks better. But Bloomberg was sharing a very interesting chart. That was the US bank deposits. Um, and they are showing that since uh, March last year, the deposits on US banks are declining. Um, recently, since February, even sharply, they dropped really sharply. And, you know, usually when you are noticing that, uh, if you are noticing a transition to a bank run, usually and that's the main goal and function of a central bank, or at least it should be, is to protect the interest of retail. So to say, hey, bank, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I, we know you, you need liquidity. So to protect the deposits of your customers, if you need some liquidity, oh, we can offer different options. So we know, for example, one option was uh, the, uh, for example, the discount window loans. You you remember uh, that was in March when they pushed up by almost 160 billion within just, I don't know, that was few days or something after Silicon Valley Bank and Signature and, you know, some, some <laughs> what a coincidence, some banks related to crypto. Well, they, they just said, the banks oh, oh, holy shit we 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 have another source to get liquidity so of course when the money is there even if it's not cheap uh, because they are paying i don't know five 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 percent right now um they said yep yeah, we will take it. We take it. We take it. We will pay it back. No problem. But we take it. We need the money. Usually you would say, okay, that's great. Um, you are a professional. You know that your business works only if the retail deposits money on your accounts and will stay as a customer. Uh, that's a great thing. I love that. But the problem is they use the discount window loans, but they still have some problems, bigger problems, and they need even more liquidity. 
The question is why? Why is that happening? How is that possible? And I mean, the money is not for less. I mean, they need to pay. And of course, the question is, uh, what's your purpose? What what are you doing with this money? I mean, well, I think it's gambling money. That's what they are pushing. That's what they are using to pushing up the markets. But of course, they need to be good, because if th something goes wrong. Then you have two problems, your clients on one part, because they have unprotected deposits, then you have a lot of loans, yeah, emits via the discount window loan, but you need to pay them back in relatively, relatively, it depends what kind of loan uh, you have used, but usually in one year, two years or something, you need to pay that back. So it's not easy taking into account the current market conditions because, yeah, everything looks fine. But only because the sun is shining doesn't mean that in 30 minutes it can rain again. Because we know that that's usually also happening close before a tornado. So, you know, banks are not stupid. They are not stupid. Yeah, and they are not flexible, but I wouldn't say they are stupid. They know exactly how it works. And while they are keep yelling and crying, oh, we need more liquidity because, you know, our clients are taking out the deposits and we need the liquidity. Of course, who is listening? Yes, the Fed. So the Fed starts to think and what can we do to support these banks it seems discount window loans didn't work that well yeah they used the opportunity but nah, nah something you know it's too costly that brings more pressure to them so ah, we need to rethink it and of course they are so creative that they said Bank Term Funding Program. What a name. Bank Term Funding Program. Now some people should say, what? What is that? Well, let me um, just read. The F Federal Reserve Board on March 12, 2023, announced the creation of a new bank term funding program, so it's relatively new. The BTFP offers loans of up to one year in length to banks, savings associ associations, credit unions and other depository institutions, pledging US treasuries, agency debt, mortgage, baked securities and other qualifying assets as collateral. These assets will be valued at par. Oh, that's crazy. No fees, no anything a better rate than of course just if you know what will be the next word of course better than the discount window loans but what is the purpose of such a program well usually to provide liquidity to u.s depository institutions each federal reserve bank would make advances to borrowers taking as collateral certain types of securities for what to protect the deposits of their customers that's the goal the rate is fixed and that's beautiful because the rate is just in term of one year overnight index swap rate plus 10 basis points the rate is fixed and that's beautiful. Just imagine someone would just give you the opportunity. Um, you know, you can use, I don't know, uh, some, some collateral, your house, for example, and he will give you a credit with fixed interest rates in a situation where you know that the interest rate will change. At least 
even the Fed is saying, ah, we will pause. Uh, I think Yellen did or mentioned something like that. However, why is that a problem? Well, first of all, I would say that's not a problem. It's not a problem if you are using such kind of program for the purpose why it's existing. To use that, use your collateral. Yeah, you can use your US treasuries. Oh, Tether has a lot of US treasuries, but <laughs> they are not a bank and not member of the Fed. At least that's what we think and know, but nobody knows anything about that. But imagine they would have access to the federal system. Woohoo! That would be great to the moon just tomorrow. However, they can use US treasuries and other kind of secured or very, very um, uh, secured um, assets uh, to borrow money under this program. And now the most funny thing. They are using the new program loans and that that's the whole story i mean that's so stupid but it works always it works cheap money cheap money is the key do you have cheap money gambling yeah baby it's like you know you have a lot of 100 dollar notes as a belt and then you know some uh yeah ladies whatever and dancing and you can it's exactly the same shit it's really exactly the same shit they are using btfp loans to pay their discount window loans isn't that great less interest fixed and they can use their u.s treasuries as collateral but Nobody is telling them, hey, you need then to use this liquidity to protect the deposits of your customers. Uh-uh, they are not doing it. Nobody is forcing them. It should be the case because that's the purpose and the goal of such a program. But nobody cares. So if you want a little bit more cheap money with to protect your benefits, you know, your gain, I can tell you the interest rate is fixed and you don't need to sell all your US treasuries because of course it wouldn't be in our interest that you start to sell your US treasuries. Instead, you can use them as collateral. You remember who is doing exactly the same? You remember the program I have introduced you in? You, you remember that? where even foreign central banks can use their U.S. Treasury as collateral and they get liquidity for that? Do you see the connection? They are doing exactly the same with the banks now. Exactly the same. They don't care about the deposits of their clients. But follow the flow. Follow the flows. That's the key. They are using any kind of opportunity to be sure that no one is going to sell U.S. treasuries because that could be a big, big pain for the U.S. They know that exactly. Instead, they are mm, building a big, big con construction of the Western nations to force them to use their U.S. treasuries and to buy even more U.S. treasuries instead of gold, for example, because they can use them as collateral and um, receive just liquidity from the Fed, U.S. dollars, of course, U.S. dollars. I have mentioned that that is part of a political agenda because we are hitting a currency war why many currencies will be backed by gold and others by U.S. treasuries. <laughs> that's, that's, you can have gold, U.S. treasuries. So, but the funny thing is they are using now the same with banks. And banks are using them to pay, wow, well, my beautiful gambling budget. I have used uh, while receiving loans via the discount window 
loans and now using the BTFP loans, but it's exactly the same crap. Just to give you an example, discount window, um, in one week they paid 18 billions back. In the last three weeks it was 83 billions back. From the peak of 153 billions they received. The bank term funding program has new fans, a lot of new fans. In one week, 15 billions, remember, 18 billions discount window, 15 billions bank term funding program, and 79 billions in three weeks, versus 83 billions they paid back from the discount window loans. Uh, okay, I don't need to be an Einstein to say, Ah, it's very similar. Yeah, it is similar. And it's easy to explain you why it's similar. Because it's the same. They are just using one source to prepay the other, to pay back the other, and to keep doing what they do, but not protecting your deposits. And usually that works fine. That works fine because what they are doing. I mean, if you want to be fine with that money, usually you take an, in, a credit to invest that money, to make more money with that, right? That, that's the best case. If you get 100 billion and you can make 120 billion, wow, you are the king. You can pay back the 100 billion with some interest, 5% per year or whatever, and the gap is yours. That's your gain. That would be great. And maybe you will have such a kind of puffer just in case of something goes wrong and you need some liquidity. But it's not the case. Yes, they are gambling. Yes, they are making short-term uh, profit with that money. Not that much. But yes, that's what they are doing. And that's why the markets are pushing up more, 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 more moment because we are reaching a peak. Means, ha, huh, we need to buy more tr US treasuries, but wait, it doesn't count. So even if you buy more US treasuries, you can't use them as collateral for BTFP loans. I mean, the Fed is stupid, but not, well, it's retarded, but not an idiot. <laughs> so they are saying, in case of they start to buy US treasuries, US treasuries, US treasuries to get more liquidity, more liquidity in a fixed interest rate, that could be the hell. Now for the markets, you can imagine artificially pumping, uh, pumping and pumping and pumping more money. So, of course, some people would say, but Inspo, they are using them also for loans. What loans? Retailer loans? Really? What kinds of retailer loans? Did you check the last data? I mean, retail, for what should be the retail get loans? To pay their interest or their loans? Oh, that wouldn't be a good idea. Because to get a loan, to pay another loan, it's usually not a good idea. Only if you have plan B. Plan B main. you have a good job, you can make even more money and that's it. That would be amazing. But if you don't have it, hmm, this money is uh, in a risk. And of course, we are getting more and more regulation also related to credit and to loans. So it's not easy to get a loan anymore. And if you come and say, yeah, I have debts, I need a loan to pay all my debts, uh, the bank should say, um, only if you have a nice collateral, you you, you don't have, uh, then it's, it's not cool. Well, at the same time, we know as well that, for example, retail sales fall more than expected in March. They didn't expect that. So if we take a look uh, where we receive, for example, a lot of negative changes in retail consumption, for example, we see, for example, in 2022 was a half for electronics and appliance stores. It's incredibly, incredibly bad. 
in the monthly general merchandise stores building materials okay building real estate it's looking absolutely but crossover almost everything furniture home furnishing motor vehicle and parts clothing and accessories and whatever the only thing that still works well is health and personal care non-store retailers and of course some food but just in the yearly view if you check the monthly one even in march it declined by one percent it, it's not cool at all and i mean electronics and appliance stores 10 in 2022 jesus that hard so for what exactly should retail get loans for what they are consuming less why are they consuming less are they unfair or are they just in debt and yes once again the ship that is sinking push up before it disappears and that's what's happening that's what's happening since a while and crypto if you like it or not it's part of it because the money comes You know, when a tsunami starts to form its strength, usually it sucks the whole water from the coast. And people will say, look, that's beautiful. Now we can walk there, where usually it's water, without to think that the next 30 meters high wave is hitting to your face. And usually when that happens, it's too late when you are noticing that's a trap. And it is a trap. Well, crypto is a little bit different because crypto is really just in hands of few, really few. I mean, uh, we can talk once again about Tether and I really don't like to talk always about Tether because I don't care about Tether that much. I, I, you know that I don't like Tether at all. But, and thank you very much. I, I really was noticing that just a few hours uh, ago, Bad Bunny. So, Alvaro, thank you very much for, for this tweet. Um, Paolo, why not? Wow, 16. Oh, I don't know. I mean, do you understand that? Oh, yeah, I guess. Oh, let us go here. A bot, a cloud, a plaque, a shape. Uh, what the hell? What he is talking about? Do you know that? Is he talking to you? Green for up, red for down? Is that crypto? Is that seriously, is that crypto? Jesus. And I mean, I have mentioned so many times, I love the technology behind and we don't need, oh, here, my, my lovely sentence. You can ignore the tsunami, but the tsunami will not ignore you. Yeah, and that's true. He is right, this guy. Um, however, it seems that's part of, of the crypto, of the crypto space. Of the crypto market while now the US government once again they want they are working on the next stablecoin bill and some of the details they are coming out talking about if a stablecoin is not baked by a hard asset like fiat They are not talking about U.S. Treasuries, uh, something that it was wondering me a little bit. Why not U.S. Treasuries? I mean, if banks can use U.S. Treasuries as a collateral to get U.S. dollars, why need a stablecoin to be baked by, by USD? They are not, not mentioning U.S. Treasuries. They are even saying if a stablecoin is not baked by U.S. dollar, It will be banned for two years. I, I, I really thought, eh? why? Why making this kind of separation? Why are you allowing banks to use their US treasuries as collateral? And why are you saying to stablecoin providers that they need fiat? 
why we all know that it's not that easy. I mean, if banks have liquidity problems, you know, hmm, it's going to be really hard. But it is what it is. And the question is, if they are really going to publish such a bill, what will happen with the crypto market? As this crypto market could be a lot or could be very transparent because we have on-chain, it seems recently it doesn't work at all, but it is transparent. It's really transparent. And that's what I love. Not only the technology behind, mainly on Bitcoin, for example, but it, it works and it's fine. It should be part of our future and it will be part of our future. And the only thing, and that's the problem, the whole environment, our environment, will change. And even all these advantages will not be that big anymore. Not for us. However, um, 31 minutes, it's time to change um, and to go forward and to talk about what's going to happen, what on-chain data is showing us, if we can see anything useful to us. But, you know, I have said so many times and people need to understand that a market, you can't push up a market with wish thinking or praying only with money and when money is coming in with low volume you should ask what's behind if you don't and just following the price good luck So let us take a look to the weights ratio one day time frame. Um, yeah, as, as you can see, uh, it lifted up Sunday. It's declining right now a little bit. So the weights ratio 30 days moving average lifting up once again. Uh, I'm just saying it without any kind of interpretation because, uh, well, uh, everything changed a lot and <laughs> while usually the weight ratio when it starts to decline it's where it takes action and usually the price should go down it wasn't the case here uh, just twice once here once here but to be honest if we take a look um usually the weight ratio should decline even more one comment and that's something i had in mind is of course the weight ratio is a ratio even if it's only about spot but what happens when wash trading was having um yeah just an effect to their uh weights ratio impact that's something i had in mind but it's almost impossible <laughs> to know if that's the case or not to be honest uh, because usually bots are using, um, you know, uh, lower amounts um, to trade. So usually their retail amount should be bigger than their weights amount. But I don't really know why, why, why the weights ratio. I mean, the the only argument I have why the weights ratio is not having the effect as um, expected is pure distribution that's a distribution and yes we can't see that in other phases because a set the market has changed not only this market but markets have changed and every time when something changed and ha will have of course um, an effect to many different indicators so still the only indicator we have is follow the flows it's really to see where the money is coming from but there is the problem that's not the most transparent part of crypto unfortunately if we could have a bigger insight to that that would be much much better but it's it's not the case however under 
normal circumstances, I would say someone is here preparing once again a bigger cell pressure. But, you know, that's what they did just before and nothing happened. Now, under the current um, conditions, without any kind of wash trading, we will see if that will play out as we know it. If we take a look to the waste ratio one hour time frame, uh, we can see here, for example, that once again, they, <laughs> once again, and once again, it's almost, I mean, the best thing you can do is really to trade the world's ratio one hour time frame. And that's the best thing you can do. Because every time, even if the price goes down, when you are noticing that weights are stopping to send bitcoins to centralized exchanges, you know, okay, it's not that level anymore to sell. And that's where the price starts to uh, go up once again, like it's doing right now. And we received uh, the, the signal um oh let me see we receive it uh three hours ago and in here that was this morning 12 hours ago so usually you know okay they are pushing down but then afterwards we should go up we need to see how far because it declined it didn't decline that much as expected and we had for example here that was uh, March 18th, you remember, or even here, for example, that was in uh, March 8th, and you know the price went up afterwards once again. If we take a look now here, for example, we can see that uh, the weight ratio, 30 hours moving average, once again, uh, went almost to uh, 88, and there is where the price started to decline while at the same time the stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges is declining while people are cashing out and exiting so let us go forward so if we take a look here for example uh, let me check uh, yeah i need to go a little bit more down uh, we see we had here a bigger um, inflow that was almost 2,800 uh, bitcoins. Uh, but that's it. That's mainly it. I mean, we had here 800 bitcoins, uh, here 2,000. So uh, nothing has changed. Someone is sending 2,800 bitcoins. One hour later, 2,000 bitcoins outflow. Uh, however, the price started to decline, mm, mainly... I think, in my opinion, uh, mainly driven by bots. Um, so it doesn't look like, you know, everything looks at the moment driven by bots. Well, that's another thing. However, um, so nothing to see here. Let us go forward. So if we take a look here, I, I'm, uh, I'm noticing that I still have, I still have, all my charts here available i really thought crypto quant is uh, going to cut me off but uh, not yet it seems i need to prepare my plan b however um if we take a look that's the net flow of stable coins related to derivative exchanges you can see we received here more than uh, the funding rate pushed up i will show you here so so the funding rate pushed up declined and pushing up after we receive much more stable coins than alt flows. Uh, while the open interest, for example, we can see that here. So, and the leverage ratio is doing well. That's what it's doing, correlating to the open interest. However, open interest uh, did a better work than the leverage ratio. So many gamblers, um, it seems they capitulated already. So um, it looks like they are um, right now pushing up a little bit the, the funding rate uh, just uh, going more long. If we take a look here, for example, uh, we see that we are receiving more Bitcoins to derivative exchanges. That's why the net flow here is just positive and green. 
uh, even the chart here it's not indicating the same but it's just because we received here almost 12,000 bitcoins and the whole scale changed and that's the only thing so if we go forward we can see yesterday we liquidated almost nothing 133 bitcoins and longs and 230 bitcoins and shorts so absolutely nothing the um we can see here that we almost reached a level of november in open interest and it started to decline like the leverage ratio while the funding rate the aggregated one is pushing up more so it's pushing up more more and more that's um yeah at least the result of this interpretation here so while open interest declined without really um to liquidate a lot of um i mean if i take here a look no they didn't liquidate a lot of um of longs and shorts However, the open interest declining, it seems someone was taking profit. Also leverage ratio declining just uh, before. And the leverage ratio declined just because of April 10th, where we liquidated almost 1,500 Bitcoins and shorts. So high leverage shorts were, um, yeah, they liquidated them. Oh, I need, so uh let me refresh the site uh we see that shorts now declining while longs coming up once again 56 to 44 indicating that people are like the aggregated funding rate also was showing they are longing more on ethereum looks a little bit different it's almost the opposite 46 to 44 indicating they are more on the short side and Bitfinex, well, oh, once again, they received more longs, 2.7 billion Bitfinex. So let us take uh, a look to Binance liquidation map and 180 millions. Also here, it declined a lot. You remember we had 1 billion. That was weeks ago, that was in March. Now we are coming back to what we know, 180 millions. And uh, well, uh, the biggest liquidation cluster here is at 37 SAM for short. And the biggest one in long is here at 28 SAM 100, uh, making 180 million. So it, it looks like that someone is longing almost with high leverage. Wow. No. Someone is shorting with high leverage. And, well, well we would have here a liquidation cluster of 86 million. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Can I, can I see that here? Uh, no. However, we can see that here. So, yeah, it's obviously we should go up, hitting 30k, maybe even go a little bit higher, 30,600 or something, something. That would be something that I would expect here as well. And then we need to see what's going to happen next. Oh, I need credits soon. So let us go forward. So the CBD um, also here um, indicating down, down, down. BUSD down, but not that down. Once again, Bitcoin collateral down, even futures down, everything is down. At the moment, everything is indicating like, well, well let us let us sell. Um, so if we go forward, BUSD, of course, as mentioned, Bitfinex, I mean, look what Bitfinex is doing since a while. I mean, uh, it's there absolutely in distribution mode. Uh, they pushed out the market, and since we reached the level of 29k, they are only distributing. I mean, uh, 6,000, uh, yeah, 6,250 in negative CD. It's crazy because it's absolutely the opposite what the market did. 
because if we check they started to distribute here and if we check since then while they were distributing or at least selling more than buying the aggregated both almost 600 millions more than they sold ah, it's not bad so Bybit also oh, also distributing uh, Coinbase as usual only up only up only up only up and uh, I, I think the only thing is they triggered really retail for more just the YOLO YOLO instinct uh, to push up and everything is going to be we don't like banks uh, so let us buy bitcoins because bitcoins is something safe nobody knows who is holding the big part of the bitcoins well microsoft part of it grayscale everything nice guys uh, they are absolutely nice guys of course much better and jp morgan goldman sachs they are not involved in crypto absolutely not of course not because we all close our eyes and mouth and ears when Sam had its meeting with Goldman Sachs and just before we remember Coinbase and JP Morgan and so, but it's it's just, you know, it's, it's fake news and foot and BlackRock and whatever. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. Bitstamp. What should I say? Well, Kraken, very volatile, <laughs> pushing up, then down again. And yeah, and Gemini also not doing, I mean, they, we are not talking about big, big volume here anyway. So if we take a look also, for example, um, here to the, um, to the stable coins, and we can see just in, in, in the whole month since uh, the month started, a lot of yellow you can see that a lot of yellow the price started and pushed up very hard even here while at the same time we have we are having bigger cash outs at the, at the same time so and yeah you can see there now all the yellows disappeared here a little bit and now uh, we are seeing some more uh, blues here as well but those here and that um, fre uh, frequency they are, at the moment at least, uh, we can't see them. Uh, so, I refresh, we can also see that the supply is declining here on exchanges. And um, yeah, um, let me check. Can we see that? Oh yeah, the supply outside of centralized exchanges is maintains, maintains, nothing happening there. Uh, Tether at the moment currently very very active and also USDC for example uh, we can see BUSD they are taking profit over and over again and yeah that's it GUSD also taking profit but nothing big so if we take a look to the entities uh, yeah we can see that market maker pushed up while well it pushed up while this entity declined so right now this entity lifting up while the market maker declining this entity you remember i have mentioned they love to make a good deal so they started to buy cheap now they are selling um, we are talking about this entity here you can see what the price did just before all right so they started to buy or to 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 um they 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 at least they their entity their balance started to lift up here and then they declined a little bit pushed up a little bit more declined and now pushed up and declined oh jesus and declined uh, then afterwards Oh, we can see that here very well but this entity wasn't a key player in in the past uh, so it's very interesting what they did but i guess because these guys here the big guys uh, they unloaded a lot 
and maybe these guys are taking over a little bit that's absolutely not clear however re, um, retail maintaining its position pushing up these guys not doing anything these guys as mentioned declined a lot these guys in the the trend is very clear is down this guys is doing the opposite of these guys here and here nothing happened so if we take a look now to the count of wallets we can see they declined a lot retail wow here as well this one's declined but now maintaining this one's pushing up more this one's pushing up more this one's pushing up more this declined a lot because they are reducing their balances uh, the market maker received more wallets and that explains why their balance is lifted up and they declined here uh, wallets explains why their balance has declined and here nothing happened so let me check the fund flows of the market maker and we can actually also activate the others um, because we have for example this here as well and these ones we can see here 840 bitcoins well, that's really interesting uh -huh. Oh, that's really interesting so um, weights ratio wow it's okay I mean uh, here bitstamp Gemini bitphoenix up 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 Binance 45 okay not bad um, coinbase declined a little bit okex as well as well uh, as well uh, Bybit is lifting up and here the same so who are we right now lifting up while Kraken declining but it was very high um, here funds increasing their balances from that was mid of March 688,000 bitcoins now 5,000 bitcoins more usually indicating they have more demand and here for example uh, spot right now so the, the derivative market is cooling down and spot step by step pushing up more so indicating that spot volume is lifting up and usually also indicating in my opinion that the next um, dump should be front of the door but I'm absolutely um, yeah after after such a shit really um, it's it's almost you know for me I, I'm, I'm really um, yeah my interpretations are my interpretations but after every time when it was looking very solid that we will go down having a bigger correction they pushed up even more so you know it's absolutely impossible then to say but every time when the spot started to push up was when we started to go down and also here for example now it was here pushing up we went down a little bit then more up and now we will see what's going to happen because they push up with futures supporting with spot as mentioned so many times and that's it let us go forward so on coinbase we see we have here a concentration between 31 and 32 uh, thousand dollars at the same time the same concentration is between 25 and 26.5 of course we have some other orders a big one at 33 another one at 35 and everything they are now reinforcing 15k once again but you know nothing nothing big to be honest so uh yeah we need to see here's the main uh, the the local pox so usually 
we can go up to 30,300 before. Uh, Bitstamp, Bitstamp, they absorbed the 29.3 and now they have a sell order at 30,600. Here, a concentration at 26,000. Binance, on Binance. Well, you can see what Binance is doing. All the algos here uh, protecting that area and at the same time, well, maybe I should go a little bit more up. And you can see here, but however, the next um, order, sell orders at 30,500 and the next one would be at 31. Uh, bigger concentration would be here, 23, for example. But we have a lot of orders here, mainly here at the moment, between 29 and 28.5. Binance BUSD, nothing. Bitfinex BTC USD, uh, here at 32,000. Uh, 32, but also between 20, uh, 31 and 31.5, uh, waiting with a lot of volume. Um, 27.5, yeah, and then to the downside a lot, of course. Okay, spot, mm, nothing. Kraken spot, Kraken spot also waiting between 31 and 32. Wow, but they are uh, the last protection year is at 27.6, 28.2, and 29. Bitmax, BTC USD, nothing. Only here waiting at 30,600. So now buy with derivatives, BTC USD nothing, BTC USDT nothing, Binance BTC USDT, Pfft, look there, that's exactly the same crap, the same really, the same crap they are just doing uh, with spot, just, you know, once again, pushing the price up. Now holding it a little bit, but when that's gone, push up. <laughs> Incredible. So uh, BTC BUSD, nothing. Bitfinex, wow. They triggered almost all their longs here. <laughs> Look there. <laughs> Look there! Oh, that's so incredible. Oh my god. That's really so crazy. So... Until 30,000. It seems 30,600 looks very solid at the moment. That's Kraken. Futures. Orkex Futures. Wow. They... 30,600, yeah, would make sense, to be honest. Uh, and Deribit, and on Deribit, they are right now reinforcing 26.4 and at the same time 30, 32,000 at the moment. That's what we can see here, but also here protecting that area 30,800 at the moment. So that's it.